It is time to spend some time with NAT and PAT, Network Address trans Translation and Port Address Translation. And before we configure these, we need to talk about why the services are so important and some address terminology that is unique to NAT uh, that can be confusing from some sources, but you, it will be crystal clear to you when we're done here. What's going on with network address translation? You know, we're translating a network address. I get that part, I'm sure you're saying, but what about the rest? What address are we translating? We are taking a host's private IP address and translating it to a non-private routable address. And it's a simple job, but it's an important one. Because without that, hosts on, say, 10.1.1.0/24 couldn't communicate with anybody outside of their local network, because those are considered private, non-routable addresses. They have to be changed to something that can be routed across a WAN. Now, the addresses were being, that are being translated, they're from the range of private addresses. We talked about a while back, the RFC 1918 addresses. Just a general reminder for you that the masks for these private address ranges are not the same as those for the full class A, B, and C address ranges. Your masks for the full ranges are in order 816.24, but for the private address ranges, you'll notice your masks are 8, 12, and 16. You should be very familiar with these ad private address ranges before you take your exam. You need to be able to spot a private IP address. So any one of those three ranges, that's what we're dealing with. Now, the only thing that's even slightly tricky about NAT are the names given to the addresses in the process. We have inside local, outside local, outside global, and what's the one I'm leaving out? <laughs> outside local. A couple of those terms sound contradictory, you know, inside global. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. I'm gonna give you one word that clears up any confusion on what address type is what in the next minute or so. Inside local, that one explains itself. It's the address used by hosts on the local private network to communicate with other hosts on the local private network and it's being translated locally. It's being translated by a router on our side of the WAN. And in this network, the inside local address, 10.1.1.24. No problem, right? Well, inside global is the next address up. And once that address is translated by our router, then, then we have our inside global address. And in this case, I just pulled an address out of my hat, 200 111. The address has been translated, and that gives us our inside global, okay? So nothing too tricky there, but the outside terms, outside local and outside global, the outside local addresses are the non-routable addresses of hosts on the remote network. Outside global addresses are the routable addresses assigned to hosts on a remote network when the translation takes place. Now, the terms inside and outside really depend on your perspective. If the address is in use on your network, whether it's global or local, it's an inside address. If it's in use by the other involved network where the host that we're communicating with is, then it's an outside address. And this is what I mean by it all depends on your perspective. And if you are the character on the left, and you're looking at that address 10.1.1.1, that's inside local to you because it's at the network that you are at. Where if you are looking across the WAN, like the character on the right, and looking across and saying, okay, that address over there, 10.1.1.1, that is outside local. So just break that down a little bit between local and global. Your local addresses are always going to be the private addresses. Your global addresses are always going to be the routable ones, okay? So that's, that's really all there is to it. And the inside outside part just depends on whether it's on your side of the network or the other side of the WAN. That's all there is to it. Now the rest of this will all seem straightforward and simple about what happens when NAT is performed. Now when a router does that, it makes an entry in its NAT translation table and it maps the inside local address to the assigned inside global address. And when we're configuring static NAT and dynamic NAT, you'll see exactly how that assignment takes place. But this is what's going on. Apologies for being a little off center there. What happens is that the router simply says, okay, let me make a note of that. And I'm gonna map 10.1.1.1 to 200.1.1.1. 
And it doesn't just pull those out of the sky. We configure the addresses that are to be mapped and that are to be translated. And you'll see how when we do our two labs. Now, the private address, it's never seen outside the local network. And the only device that even knows what's going on here is that router. Now, the host at 10.1.1.1 doesn't know that NAT is taking place, could not care less. Whoever's receiving these packets on the other end of the communication could not care less. The only device that even knows what's going on is the NAT router. And when I say NAT router, I'm not talking about some highly specialized piece of equipment. Almost any Cisco router is going to perform NAT. Not every single model, but most of them will. So it's not like you have to go out and buy a lot of expensive hardware to make NAT happen. Now when the packets come back in with a routable address, the router checks its NAT table to see if another translation is in order. And if it is, the router translates the inside global address back to the appropriate, the mapped inside local address and then routes the packets accordingly. So when packets come back in for 200.111, the NAT router takes a look at them and says, hey, you know, that's a, that's a translation. And I have that address mapped to 10.111 in my NAT table. So that router translates the destination IP address from 200.111 to 10.111 and sends them on their merry way. And again, that host has absolutely no idea that any of that stuff happened. Speaking of configuration, we've got two different ways we can go with NAT. And while I think you'll see dynamic NAT much more in the real world and you'll see why, static NAT is still out there and it might just show up on your exam as well. So coming up, we'll take a look at static NAT and we'll configure it as well.